In this video, we're gonna try and give you a complete guide to heat shrink. Now, I'm sure there'll be things that we've missed out that you wanna leave in the comments and that can drive us into other videos on the subject. It is, and heat shrink tubing or sleeving, depending on what you call it, always gets lots of comments when we feature it in other videos yeah. on the channel. So we thought we'd best drill in to some of the applications that you can use it for. And there are lots of them, depending on which side of the world you're coming from in terms of you're at the electronic end of thing, or you're more interested in big cables, we've got something for you. But we're going to step through all the different types and the important things that you need to think about if you're choosing heat shrink and how you will use it. Let's start with those applications that we can use heat shrink for. Okay, so one of the most common ones to start with is labelling and identifying conductors. So either using heat shrink as a coloured marker or as a printed label, and obviously you can print onto it as we've uh, done many times on the channel. Uh, then it can be used to obviously protect cables, so either to replace insulation or to provide strain relief, or indeed when you start to join cables together as well. And we'll, we'll come on to it later in the video where there's heat shrink sleeves with solder already built in or wrapped around crimp terminals. There's something quite mesmerizing about adding heat to heat shrink and seeing it change size and shape. But let's think about those ratios. Yeah, well the name gives it away, Gary. It's heat, heat and it shrinks. <laughs> uh, when you're specifying heat shrink, one of the most important things is that shrink ratio. So that's the size that it starts at and the size it will shrink down to. So if I take this example here, so this is one from 3M, that's one of my go-to heat shrinks. If, uh, that's, it sounds too geeky that, but there we go. Uh, so this one here, uh, MDT, medium density tubing, starts at 38 millimeters, and when you shrink it down to 12, so that's a heat a ratio of three to one. Okay. So the 12, it will not go beyond that unless you mechanically force it, but it will naturally shrink down to uh, 12 millimeters. So that's important if you're trying to seal around a cable and obviously go around a larger object. If you're, if you're bigger than the cable in terms of the shrink ratio, it won't fully seal around the cable. So that was a three to one ratio. What other ones do they do? Uh, lots of different types, but the highest ratio I've seen it is four to one. If you can find one that's higher than that, possibly a five to one, if you can do it, put a, uh, put a comment below and possibly what you use it for. Uh, this brown version here is a two to one, so starting at about six millimetres, shrinking down to three millimetres, possibly something you'd put over the end of a conductor to mark it as being for a different purpose than the colour might have originally intended. So why don't we use the largest shrink down ratio for all applications then? Okay, so the downside of shrink ratio is the wall thickness of the sleeving itself, and you can specify sleeves with different thicknesses of walls when they start. So this one here is an MDTA, so that's medium density tubing, so yeah. quite thick, should we say, as opposed to this, uh, the brown one here that's quite narrow. So this one here starts at a one millimeter uh, wall thickness of the tube itself, but when you shrink it down, it's the same as the shrink ratio, so it goes up in thickness by a factor of three, where this one here has a, about a quarter of a millimetre thickness and that obviously two to one, it doubles in thickness. Now that can cause you challenges uh, in application, so you might actually want the heat shrink itself to remain flexible when you've shrunk it, where this medium density tubing actually goes pretty solid and obviously that can have a knock-on effect depending on what you're trying to use it for. I'm sure others like me with a keen eye noticed on this 3M heat shrink that you've got the letter A and you haven't mentioned what that means. Yeah, so MDT comes in two versions, so the regular MDT, but MDT A has an adhesive lining okay. uh, in the heat shrink, sometimes called twin wall uh, heat shrink. So the first wall being the actual heat shrink itself, the second wall being the adhesive. And the great thing is, is when you heat it up and shrink it, the adhesive also becomes liquefied as well and flows around the component that you're putting it onto. So that has two advantages. Firstly, it can create a waterproof seal. Okay. And, yeah. and you often see this on, you know, outside used by even DNOs will use a bit of this on the outside of the building when they're doing those looped supplies. Uh, or you can use it to increase the strain relief on a component. Now we just did a little example here, put some regular heat shrink uh, on a cable and it is possible. It is still pretty tough to pull it off the cable itself but then when you put the adhesive one on there and it cools down it actually becomes pretty almost impossible uh, to remove that from the cable. I've used heat shrink on site when I've been doing say a butt crimp or a through crimp to join two cables together put the heat shrink over obviously to make it waterproof using the adhesive one that you suggested but is there any other alternatives to using that traditional method? Uh, now there is actually and we can actually now get uh, butt crimps or through crimps that already have the outer jacket as heat shrink. 
Okay. And we've got an example here. We're going to join two six millimeter tri-rated cables together. So the, the yellow color is similar to that regular yellow crimp you might be familiar with. Uh, but what we actually found with this manufacturer is they produce a special crimp tool that's used just to crimp these um, heat shrink sleeves. So again, crimp it pretty much like you would with a normal crimp. So insert your wire and then crimp it down and bring the other wire in, crimp them together. It's still a pretty strong joint without the heat shrink component. But then you bring in your heat gun, you'll see the outer diameter of the yellow sleeving shrink down, but also the adhesive flows out the end as well, creating a waterproof seal and crimp in one operation. And you think the adhesive, when it runs out, is actually giving it like strain relief as well, making the two halves actually join stronger together? Yeah, it is. And there's lots of these out there on a well-known online retailer, um, but we chose these ones for not uh, making any particular endorsement to them, but there's two things I liked about them. The one they sold it as a system, so the crimp tool and the crimp, so they're telling you exactly the right die to use, which obviously helps to create the correct crimp pressure yeah. and strengthen the joint. But they also actually, they actually advertise the crimps as actually being made from copper, which uh, a few years ago we bought some from a well-known online retailer, and uh, it wasn't copper we found inside, Gary, was no, it? No, we, we rubbed it away. We rubbed away the silver and we found gold underneath. We thought we were going to be super rich, but it was actually brass, wasn't it? Yeah, and that obviously uh, does not work well when it comes to crimps because it's just brass isn't as malleable and, and doesn't really just bite into the cable as it should do. This system also has you covered when you're thinking about forks, rings and spade crimp connections as well, doesn't it? Yeah, so we've made up a ring crimp here uh, as well. So that again is the same principle. Uh, you crimp it on with the special tool designed for this crimp terminal but then once you've put it on you can shrink it on and again you see the glue flow out the front and the back of the uh, the crimp terminal itself and that is an incredibly strong and robust that's both got you some uh, strain relief in terms of uh, bending the cable so if this was in an area where it's going to be flexed uh, quite often but also protecting it against moisture ingress now obviously the terminals themselves are, are, are plated yeah uh, but actual copper wire obviously when it's exposed isn't so I think that is a great little solution for a lot of applications where you are worried about moisture possibly chemical environments and if you contrast that with what we see a lot on site especially on Instagram where we've got these ring crimps maybe going onto a bonding clamp and for some reason people like to identify with the old green and yellow sleeving as we've done here but uh, that's not that doesn't seem as good does it no I'll give you two top tips there Gary actually the identification yeah the wire is green and yellow Absolutely, I'm not worried about connecting my finger to it because it's to a obviously a clamp and the pipe. Yeah, so again, people do that a lot of the time. I'd say that's that sleeving's really designed for identification purposes. Adding it to that crimp, what has it done to the crimp? Well, it hasn't really increased the mechanical strength because that's actually provided by the crimp itself, which is pretty solid. Yeah, um, yeah, it, it looks pretty, should we say? Now, if we, you know, that is a good application. So if you want to add uh, insulation to it. So if you say had a large, uh, sort of a large ring crimp like that, you're putting on a really heavy duty cable and you wanted to obviously give that a level of protection in case people are in there uh, with their uh, you know, hands and don't really want to accidentally touch live parts. Not that you should ever be anywhere in that situation, but uh, obviously we can increase safety where possible. But in this instance here, we've used this, it can add some insulation to it, but more it's providing uh, extra mechanical strength and particularly strain relief if it's going to be bent around there. You can see we're not actually bending near the crimp joint, uh, we're somewhere around it. And again, this is this medium density tubing, thick wall thickness, and you can see the glues flowed around it. So I don't think that crimp joint is going anywhere, anywhere mm -hmm. soon. So we've got here these funny little things. These look more adept maybe for uh, the world of electronics than they do for electricians. Yeah, so then back to the soldering community, and we're not always there like a, like an opinion. Uh, so this is a heat shrink sleeve with a solder ring built in. So you uh, basically you join your cables together, uh, bring your heat gun in, and in the same operation, the uh, the tube itself reduces in size, the glue flows, and finally the solder in there flows around the uh, the conductors inside to create a secure joint. Now. We've seen these in shorts before and people were aghast at such, uh, at such wizardry. These have been around for some time and you can even get ones with a military spec to them, which sort of somehow suggests there's a, there's a proven application for them somewhere. Uh, a little top tip from us uh, when we're using them is 
uh, you need to get the copper as short as possible in that joint because if you have too much exposed copper the solder flows too far along the cable oh, yeah. and you don't get a secure joint so I would say if you're going to use these have a little practice first uh, to make sure that it's suitable for your application. My attention was drawn to this more than any other cable on the table, one I'm very familiar with, a steel or armoured cable, but it looks now as if we've got a combination of a, a shrink here, an insulation here and a shrink here. What was your thinking behind this one? Yeah, so heat shrink doesn't just come in tubes, you can actually get moulded parts. So you can get cable end sleeves, so this one here has got three ports on the end for three uh, cable outputs. I've also got a four one here on the bench as well. These are adhesive lined as well. So they're obviously going to shrink and seal around the cable to form a moisture proof seal. Now we see a lot of that you're on site and uh, people struggle with the old bringing the armoured cable into the meter box for that final termination. Well you say struggle, I don't think they do struggle. What they do is just bring the armoured cable in and have just that single layer of insulation then make it into switches and obviously other gear that's within the meter box but of course we've lost the, the secondary layer of insulation haven't we? Yeah so here's my way of uh, and it'd be interesting to get anyone's opinion on this of restoring that basic insulation yeah. and, and that additional mechanical protection on it. So we've put the moulded heat shrink component on the end of the SWA cable into there I've inserted some regular sleeving so this isn't heat shrink this is just regular uh, PVC sleeving and I've done that so that you can still bend it after you know if you put heat shrink on there and you shrunk it down it'd be even more difficult to bend it Okay, and you purposely chose grey to make it look like tails? Was that you thinking it was just the one you got just, out of the box? Just, uh, I think that's what I bought at the time. But uh, yeah, it could, does look like it. I'll surprise people and get people scratching their head. Um, but then on the end, I've just sealed the PVC sleeving with some identification uh, sleeving as well. Okay, so it stops it pulling off then, doesn't it? Yeah, it stops it pulling off, but you still can twist that around. Again, you could you could opt for an adhesive option. But one thing you do find with these more exotic uh, heat shrink parts is the tender only be available in black once you get up there. Okay, so what's this little Y one? It seems as if you had to go and made your own version. As I feel here, this feels quite hard in the middle. Don't tell me you've had that soldering iron out again, have you? Well, I have, uh, yeah, badly soldered that for everyone just to chip in uh, on the comments. Uh, so again, if you wanted to make your own sort of wire splice and branch off to something, you can make your own little uh, strain relief and moisture proof seal in one operation. So I've used, uh, Again, quite a large diameter heat shrink there, but while it's hot, just gone in with the pliers just to nip the little uh, area in between where the two cables separate. So that's give you a fantastic seal as well there, Gordon. That's a good little hack. You do like the novel approach. I've got a piece of heat shrink that says heat shrink label on the label of the heat shrink there, Gordon. So uh, what's that? Yeah, so again, that's one of the uh, biggest comments we get when we feature this in our short videos is where do we get the eFix printed heat shrink that I've got here it's in gold so yeah gold writing on the red heat shrink we actually got this done by our good friends down at Penelcom uh, we did a great video down there on LED tape another great application for heat shrink sleeving on the, on the ends there uh, if you're not doing that uh, they've got a rather exotic printer that allows them to do that however most quality uh, electricians label printers you can have an option to put uh, heat shrink sleeve in there so we've got the brother version here as well yeah. we've also done it with the phoenix contact that we've featured uh, in another video as well and depending on which software you can use you can even drag in your own logo and obviously uh, make a pretty professional job it does tend to only be in the sort of thinner grade uh, heat shrinks so great for identification i don't think you're going to find one that you can both print and label up waterproof parts uh, in one operation but i think it is that a great option for all sorts of applications take those installs to another level it does we've talked a lot about shrink but how do you shrink the shrink i think i need a shrink working with you gary but uh, uh, when it comes to the heat shrink we've used two tools in this video the first one for the lighter gauge stuff we'll suggest the metabo battery powered one which is great for if you want to identify cables and the smaller thin wall heat shrink is okay. The battery does get eaten up pretty quickly. Um, if you want to use this on the larger diameter, the thicker wall sleeving and get the adhesive to flow, you'll need a lot of batteries and a lot of time. I always suggest stepping up to a, a mains powered one, which has obviously a, a significant amount of power and, on, and it doesn't run out as well if it's plugged in. Obviously we do see people using, uh, yeah, lighters uh, and even uh, on site people use will use a gas torch um, and people ask us the question oh well you know pvc cables are, are rated you know for hundreds of degrees or 90 or 70 degrees you'll see on on yeah. um, on, on cable jackets uh, obviously this is only temporary it's very it's a quick process 
And remember when cables made, they are using melted plastic at the same time. Yeah, no, I think that goes back to your lead tape, doesn't it? Because you've got a soldering iron, you know that gets hot and you might be thinking I'll be able to waft a soldering iron over it. We've all tried that in the past, it tends to catch and stick, doesn't it, at some point? Yeah, and I would say if, you, if you're using a heat shrink with a heat gun and you start seeing the plastic of the cable start to turn brown and bubble, you're doing it wrong. Shameless plug time then. So where do we get all this kit, the heat shrink and all these adornments you've got on the desk? Uh, well, you have to shop around a little bit. So I will put a link in the description of these kits that we've used here, which are Wi-Fi ones. So that's not Wi-Fi, it's Wi-Fi, I think is, is how I spell on that. And they make the crimp tool here, which we actually think is quite yeah. good because of those interchangeable heads. Um, and they've got the solder sleeves and they're pretty good. You know, if you're dabbling first the heat shrink, that's a starting point. If you're, uh, if you're doing sort of higher specification installations, I would go with some trusted brands, so the big ones out there, Raychem and 3M that I've used for decades, and that's got me out of loads of problems uh, on that. And these molded parts I got from a company called Hilltop Products, and I'll leave a link uh, for them as well. So again, they do lots of specialist stuff, and I think they also sell uh, 3M components as well. Well, you've got years and years behind you, so thank you for all that knowledge you give us now. And you've given us some more knowledge in a series of videos we've done on ferrules. And if you want to check those out, it's just over there.